This video is sponsored by Honey. I bought 44 broken handheld game consoles from eBay, and this is part two of trying to fix them. If you haven't seen part one, you should go do that. I'll put the link down in the description below, but let's get going on part two. I've got Nintendo DS Lights, Nintendo DSiS, 3DSs, and even a 3DS Pikachu 20th Anniversary Special Edition. I think that's enough talking, let's take them apart. So far, we've repaired the Game Boy Color, the Game Boy Advance, a bunch of Game Boy Advance SPs. Now it's time for the Nintendo DS Lights. Number 14 is a cracked top screen, a bad lower screen. I'm actually gonna save this for a refurbished video on my channel. So be sure to keep an eye on my channel as that will be coming up in the next few months. This Mario Special Edition Nintendo DS Lite, I will also be doing a refurbished video on my channel, but I need to fix the problem where it won't play DS games. So I'm gonna fix that first then we'll call this one done and save it for a future refurbished video. One of the easiest ways to repair them when they don't show the game when you plug it in is to clean these pins down in here. This is assuming that none of them are bent or damaged, which I don't see any that are bent or damaged. So I'm gonna give them a good cleaning and see if that'll fix it. I'm gonna start by loading up the game cartridge pins with a bunch of IPA which unfortunately right now is not really available. But when it is available, this stuff works great for cleaning those pins. And then I'm just gonna press it in and out a whole bunch of times. Now I'm gonna let that air dry and then we'll try it again. Now let's try it again. Okay, so it's still not reading. This means we need to take it apart and see if we can figure out why. Now we need to have a good look at each of these pins, see if we can find any that are damaged or broken. I don't see any problems so far. I did give it a good cleaning from this side and then also cleaned this side again. So hopefully just that cleaning will be enough to get it working. Now I'm gonna get it put back together and then we can test it again. Okay, back together, game is installed, let's test it out. And there we go, it's showing up on the screen. Let's see if it shows up. Yes, it does, great news. So this one is now fixed. Like I said, I'm gonna save this for a future restoration, so watch for that on my channel. Let's move on to number 10. And number 10 has a similar problem, won't play DS games. So I'm gonna go through the same process and hopefully we can get it fixed pretty quick. And here we go, do you think it's gonna work? Yes. Okay, great news, another easy fix. I do wanna mention that I do know that some of these have cracked hinges. And so these fixes that I'm doing are just for functionality. I'm not doing the cosmetic fixes on this video as those fixes take a long time to do and generally aren't worth it when it comes to trying to make your money back. Be sure to watch for my restoration video though, as I will be doing that in that video. So for the DS lights, there were seven of them that I didn't find any problems at all wrong with them. I did a couple of the easy fixes and then I'll make another video or two on some more of the in-depth fixes for those consoles. Now it's time to move on to the DSi. For the DSi's are working fine with no problems found, but these three need to be repaired. I'm gonna start with the pink one, then move to the black one, then move to the DSi XL. We've got a bad lower digitizer on this one, so we need to get that replaced and then this one's actually gonna be in really nice condition.
Now this DS light looks way better. Let's just make sure it turns on. And it does. Look at how much better that digitizer looks than this old one. This was the one before, and now it looks brand new. And hey, it even works. Now that number 26 is working, we need to move on to number 25. We've got a bad lower screen and the top inner case is cracked. I won't be fixing the top inner case problem now, but I will be fixing this bad lower screen. This is the before of the lower screen. It's just got a bunch of lines here and just nothing shows up. And here we go, let's see how the lower screen looks now. There we go, that looks so much better. This DSi is all fixed and it's time to move on to the next. I wanna take just a minute to tell you about Honey, the sponsor of this video. Online shopping is supposed to be easy. You can shop in your PJs or on your computer. So why is finding coupon codes that actually work so difficult? With Honey, it doesn't have to be. Honey is the free online shopping tool that helps you find discount codes and automatically adds them to your cart. Now imagine you're shopping on one of your favorite stores, Walmart, Newegg, Best Buy. When you check out, this little box drops down and all you have to do is click apply coupons. Wait a few seconds for it to scan promo codes from across the internet and watch the prices drop. I used Honey to buy my favorite pair of pants and Honey helped me save over $15. I couldn't believe that saving money was that easy. Honey has found its over 17 million members, over two billion dollars in savings and supports over 30,000 online stores. Users love Honey. That's why it has over 100,000 five-star reviews on the Google Chrome store. By not having Honey, you could literally be passing up free money. It's free to use, finds coupons with one click, and is now part of the Venmo and PayPal family so you know it's legit. Get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash tronixfix. That's joinhoney.com slash tronixfix. Thank you again, Honey, for sponsoring this video. I've been looking forward to repairing this deal. DSi XL ever since I started. It's got a bad charge port. I gotta get the bottom cover off, the motherboard out, and then we can fix that. So this isn't the best news. This is a liquid damage indicator that you can see has turned completely pink. There could be some damage inside. I won't know till we get this bottom cover off though. Hopefully, if there is, it's not too bad. I didn't see any liquid damage on the actual motherboard, so I think the liquid just got in the battery compartment. All that also looks fine. Now I just need to plug it in and see if it charges. And there we go, we got this one charging. I've gotta leave this on the charger and get it charged up so then I can test the rest of it. But now it's time to move on to the Nintendo 2DSs. Number 33, this nice blue 2DS does not play games. So let's take a look in the game cartridge slot and see if we can figure out why. I can't see anything wrong in there, so I'm gonna do my cleaning trick and see if that'll get it working. And there we go, we got a game ready to play. So our 2DS is ready to go. Now it's time for this red and black 2DS. And this one has a bad screen, so I've gotta take the back cover off, get the motherboard out, replace the screen, and then put it all back together.
and there's some pretty major liquid damage down here. Also on this screen, you can tell that's one of the things that's causing a problem, although the screen is also shattered. I'm gonna clean up this whole motherboard. I don't know for sure if this thing's gonna work when I put it back together, but we've gotten apart this far. Might as well just keep going. Now we've got this bad screen replaced with a new screen. Let's see how it looks. Oh, that's not good news. Now it doesn't power on at all. Unfortunately, this 2DS is probably not gonna be fixable. I think probably what happened was all of that liquid damage that I tried to clean off may have disrupted some components or caused some sort of problem that made it so now it won't turn on. That's one thing that happens sometimes with liquid damage. Sometimes when you clean it, it just makes things worse. Now it is always possible that this screen that I put in could also be faulty. It was a used screen that I don't know for sure, for sure was good. So that's always a possibility as well. Either way though, I wouldn't have sold this one anyways because of the liquid damage. So it's really no loss other than now I don't know if this screen works either. So we fixed one 2DS. We did not fix one 2DS. Now it's time to move on to the PSPs. This first PSP number 32, I'm actually gonna save this one for a refurb video. So keep an eye on my channel for that. So I'm gonna skip this one for now and save this for its own separate video. Handheld console number 30 has no power. Also, this door does not stay closed unless you manually move the button back. It also is missing some screws up here, so I'm guessing it's been taken apart before. This rusted out screw might indicate some liquid damage. So this one's got all kinds of stuff going on. Let's figure out what all it needs. I'm gonna first try replacing the battery and see if that'll get us some power. Now with the battery replaced, let's see if it powers on. No power. Oh, okay, it does have power. Just no uh, light on the power button right there. Let's see if it plays games. And this one definitely does not play the game disc. So I need to figure out why it's not playing games. Also, I need to figure out why there's no light over here and why there's no light when the charger is plugged in. and we definitely have some more liquid damage on this board. I have to figure out if I just need to replace this board or if there's other damage on this motherboard or the rest of the console that would prevent it from being fixable. This ribbon cable definitely has liquid damage, but it may be salvageable as well. So after looking at this PSP for a while, unfortunately it's just gonna be something that's not really fixable. It could be fixable, but I have to get a new ribbon cable, a new UMD drive, this board right here with the power button and light on it. At some point in the future, I may come back and try and fix this once I can get parts. But right now, unfortunately, I have to move on to the next PSP. Number 29 won't play games, so we're gonna replace the UMD drive.
And here we go, this PSP is now playing games and it is all fixed. Let's move on to PSP number 31 that also won't play games. So number 31 is done, number 28 has no problems that I could find. Now that we're done with all the PSPs, it's time to move on to the Nintendo 3DSs. This regular 3DS needs the top screen and bottom screen replaced as they're all scratched up, as well as the outside case. So I'm actually gonna save this for a refurbished video. And this 3DS XL has a broken top screen, which takes a long time to replace. So I'm gonna also save this for a refurbished video. So that leaves us with five 3DSs and two 3DS XLs. And that includes this Pikachu 20th Anniversary Special Edition, which I'll be getting to, but let's get started with the four regular 3DSs. This first one has parental controls, which is an easy enough process. You can just Google that to see how to do that. I'm gonna do all that off camera and move on to number 38 with a right shoulder button problem. And there we go, the right shoulder button on number 38 is working fine now. It's time to replace the charge port on number 37. I need to remove the bottom shell to get to the charge port, so I'm gonna do that next, and then I'll show you how to replace it. This is the current charge port situation. Hopefully the motherboard isn't damaged. That'll determine whether this will be fixable or not. So I've got to remove the bottom off of the 3DS and then I can inspect the charge port and the motherboard. So this is what I have to work with. It looks like the motherboard is fine. So I need to finish removing the remnants of this charge port and then I can put a new one on. I'm gonna use this pair of flush cutters to cut the old one off the board, hopefully without messing up any of the pads on the motherboard. And then we can remove the remnants off of the pads and then put the new one on. Now that the charge port's replaced, I'm gonna put the battery in just temporarily and then just test it to make sure it's working. There we go. We've got the orange light, so that means the charge port is working fine. So number 37 is now fixed. Let's move on to number 35 and repair the game slot. And there we go, that was an easy fix for this 3DS. Now it's time to move on to a 3DS XL number 42. The blue light flashes, but won't turn on. So here's the problem here. Blue light flashes for a second, but it doesn't stay turned on. Okay, let's check the battery first, the battery connection, and make sure that's good. So this is the liquid damage indicator. And as you can see, it's pink instead of having red dots on it. So we might have some liquid damage on this board. So I'm gonna take off the bottom cover and see how liquid damaged it is. And actually it doesn't look that damaged. We've got some indications of some liquid damage there. Not really much else though. 
it always is possible that it's liquid damaged on the top side. <laughs> you can see someone did try to fix the problem with rice. Don't use rice, rice does nothing. So next let's get this motherboard out and check out the underside. There we go, here is the problem. We got some serious corrosion on the power and battery charging circuit right here. I'm gonna try and clean it off, see if that'll fix it. If not, we may need to do some more work on this part. So I've got all these components cleaned off. I'm gonna heat this section all up and just reflow all these components just to make sure the solder joints are as good as possible. And then I'll put it all back in and try and start it up and see what it does. Now it's time for the moment of truth. Is it gonna turn on? Great news, the blue light's staying on so far. I see a backlight, good. And there we go. We have now fixed number 42 where the blue light flashes but won't turn on. It seemed like that cleaning the corrosion and reflowing the charge and power chip on the motherboard fixed that one. Now let's move on to number 41 with the game slot that's bad and it's also very dirty. It's really hard to show on camera. One of these pens looks like it may be a little bit bent or something. So I'm gonna take this bottom case off and see if we can get a better view of that. It's really hard to see it, but these two bin pins back here seem to be, I don't know if they're bent or what, they're in a different position than the rest. So I'm gonna see if I can get that problem fixed and then we'll test this game slot. And there we go, the game slot is now working. Let's move on to my last and probably my favorite one out of this entire lot, number 44. It is the Pikachu 20th Anniversary Special Edition. This one freezes when I start it up, so let's take a look at this one and see if we can fix it. It's very obvious that someone has tried to repair this already because we've got this chunk taken out right here. Some of the screws are missing and the motherboard is not even in there correctly, so hopefully it's something we can fix. We'll find out really quickly. And one thing I know I need to do is replace this case because this one is just totally destroyed. So I'm gonna replace that now. That's not gonna help with the functionality of it, but it's gonna make it look much better. If you're enjoying watching me try and fix all of these handheld game consoles, I've got videos of trying to fix all sorts of stuff from a bunch of PS4s to Xboxes, even iPhone 10s. I'll put that playlist up on your screen at the end and come hang out with me over there and see what else I can fix. Let's see if it'll work now or if it needs something else. We got a blue light right here, that's good. Okay, here we go. Ah, uh, nothing. So it seems like with this 3DS, maybe there's a problem with the motherboard, I can't really tell. The good news is that I actually have a spare motherboard from this same model of 3DS. And since there's nothing different about these other than the shell from the normal 3DS, I'm gonna go ahead and replace the motherboard and see if that'll fix it. Now normally on these, it's not necessarily worth it to replace an entire motherboard, but since this is a special edition that's worth quite a bit, I am gonna go ahead and do it, especially since I have the motherboard just sitting here anyways. Okay, now the motherboard's replaced, just gotta put this bottom cover on and then we can test it. So for number 44, I replaced the entire motherboard. Will it work now? I sure hope so. 
Okay, we got the 3D slider working and the analog stick is working, D-pad is working, and these buttons are working. So number 44 is working great. We fixed almost all of these 44 broken handheld game consoles. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you again, Honey, for sponsoring this video. There's a link up on the screen for a playlist where I try to fix lots of other broken stuff. So go check that out if you like this type of video. And I hope you have a good one.